All right, it is the top of the hour, and so we are going to go ahead and get started. Just want to first say thank you to everyone who's joined. We've got a lot of people that are on this webinar, a lot of folks that are really excited about hearing about iBeacons in education. And really what we want to do is start thinking about different ways to use iBeacons and use them as a way to manage the mobile student body that we have. At the bottom of this slide is that same link to the survey, and we're going to talk about that more and more. But if you've just joined in the last couple minutes here, we are conducting a survey to find out a little bit more about iBeacons in your environment, any current deployments you're doing, different things that you're thinking about or use cases for iBeacons. We'll talk about some here in the webinar, but we wanted to have a way to hear directly from you about what some of the ways to use iBeacons, uh, the, the things that you're doing and the ways that we can keep pace with some of the workflows that you're imagining. For going through the survey at the end, we'll have an app that you can use that Nick will talk about here during the webinar. I'm joined by Nick Amundsen. Uh, he's the manager of our research team. And this is John Miller, the manager of our product owner team here at Jamf Software. And we really want to spend some time talking with everybody about education and about iBeacons in education. A little bit of kind of logistics and housework. Uh, there is some Q&A options uh, here within WebEx. Feel free to send in any questions you have. We've got one coming in already. Uh, any questions you might have about iBeacons, use that Q&A and we'll be able to respond to those at the end and kind of talk about uh, any of those use cases that come up or answer any of those questions. And then obviously if there's any that we miss or if we get a large influx uh, and we can't get to all of them by the end of the hour, we will of course follow up as always and answer any questions with email um, and kind of touch base that way. For the purposes of the webinar itself, we're gonna talk a little bit about what iBeacons are different benefits of iBeacons and use cases, and then talk about tools from Jamf Software. And we really wanna talk about all these within education and the specific use of iBeacons in education. I think when we look out at the, the market and a lot of people, there's a lot of buzz around iBeacons, specifically in retail and the uses of iBeacons in retail and why that's a helpful thing and a lot of excitement around that, but not a lot of other applications of iBeacons. And so we wanna talk about how we can use iBeacons to help us manage our devices in an education setting, or maybe if you're even not in an education setting in a lot of different settings that we have. First, we just want to talk about what iBeacons are. And so for the purposes of this conversation, iBeacons are really just a way to understand the, uh, the, the different physical environments that we have in our area. And so what I mean by that is we can define what's called a region. And a region is made up of multiple different uh, iBeacons themselves, which can be both software or hardware. And so when we look at an iBeacon region, we can use different vendors and through the survey results that we have and just through different conversations, we know that people are uh, using different iBeacons. And with these regions, we can understand devices that are near or devices that are far. And Grover does a really good job of helping us understand what iBeacons can provide for us by defining these regions using the different vendors of those different physical hockey puck looking devices or software to understand devices that are near or far this space that we have defined. So with an iBeacon region, what we can do is to say, we wanna define all the different areas and space that we care about, and then understand devices that are near or far to that space. When we take that out of the kind of theoretical and into the practical and ways that we can use this, what we're talking about is actually defining different areas of our school buildings, different areas of our campus, different areas, uh, maybe it's a classroom itself, to say this is an iBeacon region and notify me when I know that devices are near or far from that region. Are they within that region or outside of that region? There's been a lot of excitement about iBeacons, specifically in the retail space for different use cases of this concept. But really what we're talking about is being able to use these for the purposes of managing the devices. The Casper Suite has embraced this technology since it came out. Since 9.5, we've had integration with iBeacons and we're utilizing that as a way to do just that. Device management, understanding the proximity of devices to the regions that we care about. One thing to note, or a few things to think about with iBeacons, it's very different from traditional, what people have thought about as location-based services. 
With iBeacons, the actual location of the device is not supplied. That's not something that's collected and then brought back up to the management environment. What you typically think of when you think of a um, management environment that's using things like GPS location. iBeacons are simply the regions that we care about and the mechanism to understand devices that are within that region or devices that are outside of that region. This is based on the signal strength of those devices and not necessarily on the actual GPS coordinates. And so because the uh, devices that we have, especially all the OS X and iOS devices, have an understanding of how close or far they are from these regions based on that signal strength, we know if devices are within or outside of an iBeacon region. The last point about this proximity is that it's not motion information. And so when we talk about iBeacons, it's not necessarily where is this specific device within the world. It's more, do I understand what devices are within the region that I have defined? Do I know all the devices that are in a specific classroom? Do I know devices that are in uh, my media center, for example, or within the gymnasium or outside on the football field? We can have an understanding of that based on the iBeacon regions that we've defined without actually knowing or having to track the physical location of all those individual devices. One of the great benefits of iBeacons is that the proximity is very, very accurate, and it's much more accurate than what we think about with typical GPS coordinates. The Casper Suite utilizes this proximity to understand what devices are within or outside of a region, but iBeacons are actually far more accurate than even that. iBeacons have a concept of immediate, and this is devices that are within a few centimeters of the actual iBeacon itself, so the hockey puck or the iPhone or the iOS or OS X device that's acting as that beacon. We can have an understanding of what devices are within a few centimeters of that, and that's the immediate proximity iBeacons also understand devices that are not necessarily immediate to it, but near it or within a few meters. And these are the things that are close to it. And so you can think about what are all the devices that are within a conference room? What are all the devices that are within a classroom? That sort of thing. iBeacons also have a little bit more granular of what are the devices that are far from it. And this is devices that are greater than 10 meters, but still within an understandable region. For the purposes of the Casper Suite, really all we're looking at and the utilization that's available today is any devices that are far, near, or immediate from an iBeacon that we've defined or an iBeacon region are reported back to the JSS. The granularity that's available is stuff that we are looking at for different use cases that the survey that we mentioned at the earlier uh, part of the webinar here would be really helpful to find out those use cases as well. But there are different ways that we can utilize that technology to help your students utilize their technology very simply without having to do a lot of manual configuration of those devices. The main benefit of iBeacons is really around iBeacon privacy. And we mentioned this earlier that iBeacons are not a tracking device. And so it's a little bit of a different mindset to think about with traditional location services, we're looking at all the devices that are specifically, uh, you know, we're defining the region we care about by drawing an area on a map. And when the GPS coordinates of a device fall within that, we get notified. This is uh, an end user privacy concern that we have heard a lot of and a lot of feedback that not something that's acceptable within the school systems or not something because those devices are being carried around by students, we don't want to have the liability of tracking or the ability to track those devices, but still want to know kind of uh, what devices are within the regions that we care about. iBeacons provide that without having to track that actual device. So because it's not tied to that specific mobile device, we're able to allow the students to uh, continue using the devices and not actually violate the trust in the end users themselves by tracking them specifically, but just saying these are the areas that I care about, the, the uh, regions in space that are important to me. Again, maybe the gym, maybe that's the media center, maybe that's the campus as a whole, and then have an idea for devices uh, that are within that region or outside of that region and take the appropriate action based on whatever that situation is with the understanding that we have. One of the core differences with iBeacons is the broadcast that they do is not actually based on the GPS location, but based on what's the, called the UUID, which is a unique identifier for all beacons uh, that that organization owns, and then the major and the minor. And so these, the, the combination of the UUID 
the major and the minor is a way to define that point in space or that region that we care about. And then we can actually use different variations of the major and the minor to understand all the different beacons that we care about. So for example, I can have a UUID that matches for all of my organization. So all of JAMP software or all of a specific school district is going to use the same UUID for all the beacons that they own. Within that, we have that major and the minor value, and we can denote different variables, like maybe we want to say everything that has the major value of 10 is this specific school building or this specific office. Anything with a minor of 3, for example, is going to be a room within that or an area within that. And so we use those three values to denote the regions themselves, and then when a device falls into one of those regions and sees that it's within the region of an iBeacon, it will call back to the JSS and say, hey, I'm here in this region that you have said that you care about. Is there anything for me to do? And this is a great way to talk about the different use cases and the different things that we might be able to set up as IT administrators to use that region and use that context of space to make some management decisions for different things that we need to do. One of the most simple ones that we can think about is we want to make sure that all the OS 10 devices when they come onto campus are up to date. This is a JSS in my environment that's got the default update inventory policy to update all my machines once a week based on the trigger uh, within 15 minutes. Well, maybe we want to update that a little bit more frequently, but only want to do it for the devices that are actually traveling in and out of campus. As an IT admin, I really want to make sure that the inventory is up to date for every device that's on campus. Maybe that's specifically for things like deploying patches for security. Um, in the fall, there was the Heartbleed security and a bunch of different security things that we wanted to deploy to make sure our devices weren't vulnerable to those issues. When a device falls into campus, we can see here that it's automatically going to trigger the beacon state change and it's scoped to all the devices that are within the campus beacon region that we've defined. And so now anytime an OS 10 device would come into campus, it would see that it has this beacon state change and it's now within a beacon region. It would submit its inventory back to the JSS and we would see that all the devices within the inventory are, that are on campus have a, a inventory submission that's within the last few hours as we kind of look through and the devices trickle in and update their inventory. This is just a great way to know that everything that's here is going to execute the things that we need it to. It's going to deploy the patches that we have for security vulnerabilities, or it's going to make sure that the students have the information that's pertinent for the day for whatever we need to set up for those end users. Another way, moving into the iOS space, that we can utilize iBeacon regions is for this context configuration of devices. When we look at the different contexts that we might care about, we're really looking at as a student travels from building to building or room to room, there might be different things that we want to set up for those students to protect the network, to protect our bandwidth, to protect the use of the devices, whatever that may be. And you can see I've got three different beacons here and or beacon regions that are used for configuration profiles, starting from a very broad school requirements for all beacons that are on campus to very specific to student devices that are within an Algebra 2 course. And that's just used for example's sake, but for the school requirements, here we can see that while devices are on campus, we want to disallow AirDrop and disallow iMessage for the devices that are owned by the school and supervised. So we've got a configuration profile that's got those options unchecked and is scoped to all the devices that are within the campus region itself. What this is going to do is now we know that when a device comes onto campus, that beacon state will change. It'll say, hey, I'm on campus. Is there anything you'd like me to do? That device would then get the configuration profile to remove um, air, or, uh, iMessage and remove AirDrop so that we can protect the transfer of files and the bandwidth that we have and make sure that the devices are used appropriately while they're on campus. A similar concern, and this is really looking at how we can use iBeacons and device management to affect things outside of the use of the device and more things like our network bandwidth, is here in this media center restrictions example. Here you can see I've got a configuration profile defined that doesn't allow iCloud backup or doesn't allow iCloud backup of documents and data. What this is going to do is it's really going to limit in heavy uh, traffic areas or where there's a high cluster of students like the media center, 
I want to protect my wireless bandwidth for things like backing up my iOS devices from iCloud or retrieving those documents from iCloud. We want to make sure that in the background, even when students don't know that they're backing up to iCloud or retrieving documents, that we're able to protect our bandwidth for these high concentration areas like the Media Center using iBeacons. So here we have the iBeacon region for the Media Center, and this might be a combination of 15 iBeacons that covers the total space of the Media Center itself. And now we know that any device that goes in the Media Center, it's gonna block those two functions so that the end users aren't uh, you know, destroying the bandwidth or using up a lot of the bandwidth is probably a better way of saying it for the purposes of the different things that they need to do. This is a great way to ensure end user functionality and that they have a great experience because the bandwidth isn't fading away as more and more students come and start using those other iCloud backup and using up the bandwidth. Getting even more specific is looking at the individual classrooms themselves and this is looking at the Algebra 2 restriction that we have. So here I've got another configuration profile utilizing that context awareness that iBeacons provide us as administrators to say anytime a device comes to Algebra 2, we're gonna stop their use of the camera and we're gonna stop their use of screenshots. This might be on just test day if we wanna make sure that students aren't taking pictures of the, the documents that they have, or this could be just generally speaking when we're here in this class. You can think about it the other way where if the camera's not something that's allowed on campus, we can flip that when they're in a science classroom to be able to take pictures of the different projects that they're working on and utilize the wealth of information that the iPhone or the iOS devices can create for us for the purposes of that coursework itself. Again, this is much more specific looking down to that individual classroom, but knowing that proximity of the iBeacons gives us that leverage to say we can go from everything as broad as the entire environment down to very specific as a classroom or maybe even a specific cart on a classroom as we look at the different use cases. The last one that we'll talk about is reporting. And one of the ways that we've seen people really struggle with iOS devices is understanding if devices are on campus or off campus. This could be something that's maybe used for lost or stolen devices or things like that, but it's really around, do we know what devices are here and what devices aren't here? The Casper Suite has advanced searching and in future versions, we will be able to actually advance search our OS X and iOS devices based on all the devices that are within a specific region in the Casper suite. And so here we can say, let me see all of the OS X devices that are actually on campus. We can even make this as granular as we want. Let me see all the OS X devices that are within a classroom. Let me see all the iPads that are within a specific classroom. And with the API and a lot of the extensibility and integration that the Casper suite provides, you can use that information to power other attendance records software. You can power a lot of the different things and uh, see the Casper suite work collaboratively with all the other software that you're using within your environment. We've talked a lot about iBeacons and the different use cases for them and hopefully kind of lifted a veil for different ways to use iBeacons outside of just retail and using them for management. What I want to do now is bring Nick in and Nick's going to talk about the Casper suite and iBeacons and different ways to use that, but then also how you get started. All right, so John kind of walked us through uh, what benefits the iBeacon technology can provide with the Casper suite. And so now we're going to talk a little bit about how to set those beacon regions up. So um, first of all, in your JSS, you're going to want to go to System Settings. And within the System Settings, we have uh, Network Organization. And there we have a spot where you can define these different regions that John was talking about. Now, most vendors will typically provide an app with their hardware that allows you to configure these different settings. So the setting like the UUID, the major and the minor value. And as John mentioned, um, you can specify these according to how you want to set up your iBeacon environment. So if you want a bunch of iBeacons to be part of that same region, um, you can configure hundreds of iBeacons to have the same parameters and only define one region in your JSS without having to, to go in and enter each of those pieces of hardware individually. So we're really just talking about the overall region. Um, and this is all going to depend on what kind of activities uh, you want to do with your iBeacons. So you go in, for example, uh, the media center here, we would go ahead and define a service UUID for that, and then a major value, and since it's a room within a building, we may even go as far as defining a minor value for that room as well. 
So as you can see, once we got a, a few regions populated, we have some options here now as far as how we can how we can scope our configuration profiles or our policies for OS X computers. Um, but another thing we wanted to set out uh, and do was kind of create an easy button for this. And so we realized that some of you uh, may have not worked with the iBeacon hardware yet. And as a result, we wanted to ensure that you had a way to be able to test this technology out, really get your hands on it in uh, the easiest way possible. So we've gone ahead and created an app called Casper Beacon. And it's a very simple app. There's just two screens to it, really. The first screen, you just enter your JSS URL and then a username and password. And uh, Casper Beacon will utilize the API to uh, turn itself on as an iBeacon. So this can, this can happen on any of the newer iOS devices, uh, an iPad, an iPod Touch, or an iPhone. Um, and we can enable that device as an iBeacon, and furthermore, it'll go ahead and register that beacon region in the JSS as well. So we see this as a quick way to be able to get up and running, so you can go ahead and test out this technology without having to go out and choose a vendor and deal with those um, configuration settings for hardware as well. So we hope that'll be helpful uh, in, in trying to really gather some use cases for iBeacons as well as try it out to see how it's going to perform in your environment. Yeah, the, the, the URL that's there is the, the URL to that survey. We're just going to keep plugging on that. Uh, please fill that out, and we're looking for different things. Really what we want to be able to do is understand the use cases that you're thinking about with iBeacons, the problems that you have with deploying iBeacons, and ways that we can help you in those deployments. The major problem that Casper Beacon solves initially is it's a zero investment way to actually start utilizing and testing with iBeacons. Taking the survey, you'll get that app through the B2B store, and it'll turn your device into a beacon, and you can then begin testing some of this context configuration by moving your device that's running the app near or far from a device that you want to see a state change on. And so utilizing that's a great way. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to get a piece of hardware. Really easy to set up. It adds that UUID, the major and the minor, right into the environment for you. Uh, very simple, very straightforward way to begin testing with iBeacons. So we're about a half an hour in. Uh, we appreciate the time that you guys have spent with us today. We wanted to make sure we kept this short and sweet. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time.